Hey guys. So now that I finished my uh, table saw extension wings, um, I want to add a router underneath it. Um, I had that in my old saw. And basically what I had before was just a hardboard um, <clears throat> on top of it with that had screws for my my mini router. So I have this Makita <clears throat> trim router and it's what I like to use underneath my table saw because of this, right? So like I mounted this onto this and that basically becomes the faceplate that fits in the saw. Um, and then the motor, this, this specific trim router has a, a cam system, you know, where, where you turn this and it goes up and down. I do have to reach under the table, but I've, you know, learned to deal with that. Maybe eventually I'll build a router lift itself. But for now, what I want to build is I want to build this functionality back into my new table saw. So <clears throat> I'm going to eventually route the hole for in the wood top. Uh, but for this video, we're going to be building the, uh, the plate, the face plate. Um, <clears throat> this was quarter inch hardboard and it worked pretty well. It didn't bow as much as I thought it was going to bow, but you know, I, my skills have improved a little bit. So I figure to this time, I'm going to make it out of this plate of quarter inch aluminum. <clears throat> so I should be able to cut the quarter. I'm probably going to make it the same size, which is an interesting size. It's, it's smaller than the, the router plates that are on sale from all the, the companies which I like because I can always, if I ever want to go to one of their systems, I can always just make the hole bigger, right? So like, I, if this is smaller, I can always make the hole in the table saw bigger. I can't go the other way around. So I'm going to stick with this size, which is like seven by 10. I'm not sure where I came up with that dimension, but it seems to fit really well for this router. And what, what I like about it is the hole in the table doesn't have to be this entire size. Like a lot of people just have like a little lip holding this. Mine's just going to be a 4x4 four four hole on top of the table and then the rest of it is just going to be uh, routed down so that this sits flush. But I only need a certain size for this to fit through. And with this system, it actually makes it really easy when I want to switch bits or whatever. I, I just, I basically, you know, I basically just unclamp this and the motor basically comes down from underneath and then I can take this, make my bit change and then put it back in. So this system works really well for me and uh, let's make this plate.
Okay, so now that we've cut the holes, both the main big hole and I did the screw holes with the countersink, what's left, what's next is the corners, right? So we want to round off the corners. Now, here's the, the little bit of a trick. If you're doing the plate first, like I am, before I cut the hole, you need to know what size router bit you're going to be using, because um, that's going to define what size the edges of that roundover is. So I'm going to be using a half inch diameter pattern bit. The radius is a quarter inch, so I marked a quarter inch in and a quarter inch down, and I used this uh, circle drawing uh, template and found the half inch hole and then just put it on the two marks and just drew my little corner and I'll, and I'll bring you in close once we get to the grinder but basically the way I'm going to do is I'm going to do most of the the rough cutting of it on the grinder and then the rest of it I'm either going to use a hand file or I might even just be able to use the sandpaper by that point so here you can see the mark I made so basically I came in a quarter inch and then I came in a quarter inch and then I drew that circle and that's all I'm gonna cut off with the grinder um, and make sure you wear your eye protection and some respiratory protection So next I'm just going to give it a wet sanding with a WD-40 just to get a little better surface quality and, uh, and deburr anything that might still be burred. Well, I think that does it. Um, finish the plate. Sanded it down to 1200 just to keep it clean. I try to keep all of the sanding in one direction just to, because you'll still see the scratches, but and so that's it. I'm not sure if you can see any of the reflections. There is one last thing I want to do, and that's test it. Make sure it fits. So, and it's funny because this router plate, the screw holes on this router only fit one way. 
which is strange, but I guess that's what it is. There it is. And that's essentially how it's going to work. So, uh, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Um, and stay tuned because my next video. We're going to be cutting the hole in the table saw wing that takes this and makes it functional essentially. So uh, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I will uh, see you in the next video.